hello everybody i hope that your summer is going well if it's anything like mine with it is full of rain and thunderstorms you're probably frustrated but that's okay i'm going to remedy mine pretty soon so i hope that you can salvage yours i'm going to take you on a journey for my next vacation which is right around the corner and speaking of a journey i am participating in journey a thon which is a readathon being put on by my girl chatty the mad chatterer and this readathon basically is to read middle grade however you can do whatever you want so I incorporate the rest with books that you know I would normally read which I like adult so I am on the magical path right and I have completed a book already prologue read a book with a mode of transportation on the cover and I have read and what of the cargo and it has definitely been interesting. Now, and what of the cargo to me feels almost like two different books. You have the first part of the book, which is the prologue, and it is super long, I will say, and it is a heart-wrenching historical narrative about a young woman who is aboard a slave ship that is bound for I have no idea where but you hear about all the horrific stuff that happens to her and others which is not pretty but definitely eye-opening and the rest of the book is set in modern times it's basically a historical horror type book that answers the question what happens if all the Africans that perished along the Middle Passage decided to rise up and demand justice and a return to Africa by basically slaughtering any non-blacks that are aboard the waterways. Not too much to ask right? the body count will tell. Now I love the multitude of themes and how they were articulated in this book. Very well done. You have the idea of survival by any means necessary, how the world needs drastic change and the only way really to start that is by violence. How oppression is used as a weapon of fear, how the world leaders who are mostly white really don't want change and will do anything possible to maintain the status quo and the idea how there's survival and then there's thriving and they how they are not the same thing just so many themes to even talk about just well done well done well done I love that there were strong black female characters. I love, love, love the incorporation of African ancestry. And I like the story of African ancestors left behind in Africa when their loved ones were taken away during the slave trade. That is a perspective that you don't get to see very often. I think that Ayapo Yapa, the author, has an amazing talent for storytelling, for research and development of a well thought out speculative fiction work that presents the truth about the current world and the leaders and the systemic culture of racism, oppression and unjust justice. And furthermore, do these leaders really care to change it? Hmm. Anyway, this was a really, really good book. The synopsis, I think, on Amazon is definitely vague and includes a lot of history, very relevant, but I wish it would pinpoint a little bit more towards exactly what this book was about. But I definitely think that it is worth reading. I really did enjoy the book. And that is the first stop on my journey. Let's get to travel.
Okay, so let's talk money. So there's a one-to-one -one exchange rate for U.S. dollars to Bermudian dollars, and you can actually use U.S. dollars. So we did not convert any money. So this is actually a Bermudian dollar. It's a coin, one-to-one. -one. Then you have the 25 cent piece. That's that, Oops, very pretty. You have the 10 cent right here. And then this is the five cent. And as you can see, I got some US pennies. And here's 10 cents. So very, very easy to use money.
kind of like a Lamborghini. That's a one man seat here. And then there's the other man seat there. So pretty much, you sit down over here. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> All electric. and warm and a good beach day this is Admiralty Park a secluded beach practically to ourselves right there is my boo swimming oh, yeah. oh, Crystal Fantasy Caves. Oh, look at that tree or multiple trees all docked together. Oh, oh, oh. My, yes. There's charging ports right there. <laughs> Score. This reminds me of the movie The Descent. Hopefully no animals come out of nowhere and attack us. So this is a bridge that you walk upon to view all the formations. Hold on, hold on. Ooh, and it moves. Imagine trying to find something here. 
What goes down oh, yeah. must go up. Yeah. This is a lot of steps. <laughs> this is the famous rum swizzle. Cheers. Cheers with the rum swizzles. So, this is a Wahoo nugget. Pretty big. And this is what it looks like inside. Very, very meaty. Oh, here we go. Apparently, if you're going to dive, I guess you dive over there. Somebody must be coming. I just saw this. And then uh, you go in, and I think you climb in through the cave, up back through the rock. Somebody going to jump? Come on now. <laughs> it's a cave. Look at this. I got a flashlight too. Make sure you show inside. Ooh, it's kind of humid in here. Ooh, I want the people living here. Let me show this. Look. You see it? Looks like look some old electricity stuff. Wow. That looks pretty deep there. Look like you can go. You notice here we drive on the left side of the road and there are no sidewalks. Very sharp, sharp curves. Not for the faint of heart, which is why I am not driving. This is called the unfinished church. Basically, it's a church that was not finished because there was some financial issues and disagreements amongst the congregation. So now it stands, yet none of the ceiling is finished and whatnot. You can't go in. You can actually rent this for events too, for weddings. I bet you'd be very pretty to have that inside. Well, can't go inside, I guess, but you can kind of get the idea. See? Ceilings not complete. Imagine having an event here. Very expensive, I bet. Now this is quite a view from church. There's tobacco bag.
we just came back from Tobacco Beach and now we're here at Clearwater Beach which is on the side of the airport but pretty nice not too shabby I will say let's go in look at this very pretty this is Clearwater Beach hello yeah. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> no, was faulty. The thing. Thank you. There's another one of these. Daniel Steele. Crazy, they don't have like a cover. I guess there used to be doors. Probably. <laughs> I'm coming. Do that. This is the famous Art Mill Spicy Dicey Fish Sandwich with the raisin bread and fish. Think about this. This is where my finger is. Look how... Look how thick that is. <laughs> it's like two inches, two and a half inches, three inches thick. <laughs> Here's the experience. Open it up. Holy crap. That is huge. That's. Oh my gosh. Well, hello, all my party people. I made it back. Yay. <laughs> Bermuda was lovely, 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 just super, super expensive. Everything's like four or five times, if not more expensive than the United States. So I'm going to have to work some more, but that's okay. Had a good time. So I got my cold drink here. Summer has finally rolled in. It is a bit toasty out here, but you know, I'm okay with that. So let's finish this journey, okay? So the second prompt is Smoke Mushroom. Read a book with a crazy or unusual cover. And for that, I have Pestilence. Now this is a graphic historical fiction novel that is set in, I think, like the 17th century. And you basically have this group of assassins that are sanctioned by the Catholic Church that are sent on this mission to disband this rogue group of crusaders. And what they find is that there's this group of zombies that are running amok and basically causing a new plague. And then they have to stop it. Now I thought it was bloody, it was gory, there was a lot of like boys club cussing. There was a lot of nudity that was just out of the control I will say. <laughs> But it was, it was really, really funny because the kills were just absolutely wild. But the plot was really, really unique and I enjoyed that. So I would be interested to read more in this series. I got it from the library and of course this is the only one they had. So, And that is Pestilence. And let's see, the next prompt is Camp launch pad book with magical artifact okay so for that i have two okay so i have a young you child of wonder now this is a why a middle grade it is set in a Yoruban African kingdom where you have this king that does not want to take care of his people that are outside of the inner wall of this kingdom and you have a advisor that does want to take care of the people. And then you have this young girl that has this ancestral power that will help save the people from these corrupt and violent animals. I enjoyed the representation of African culture and how it used actual Yoruban African words and language throughout the book. And I loved all the pretty beautiful images of brown people and all their beautiful varied hairstyles. Cause you know, they switch it up and I really did like that a lot. But I will say that there was a lot of characters so it was a bit confusing when it came to that. But it was a beautiful, beautiful book. I, I just, the images alone are just absolutely amazing. But worth checking out um there are more in the series as well so i may check those out too i just didn't get a chance 
And for Camp Launchpad, I also read Linden Falls for Read a Book with the Magical Artifact. And this is a fantasy book, basically about a girl whose grandmother dies. And so she goes to her grandmother's house and she finds this magical book that somehow transports her into this unseen world with gods and angels and demons and stars and spirits. And she finds that basically her world has been in darkness since the beginning of time and it's up to her to save the people and bring into enlightenment and to do that she has to find this group of other characters and people that are going to help her along this journey it just was a lot a lot a lot going on you had a lot of beautiful imagery of like the stars being like spirits that move and talk you had like all these animal human hybrids and all these colorful like gods and dragons. I just felt that like sometimes it was hard for me to understand what was actually going on. I find myself just going backtracking sometimes and like what, what, what's happening? But it was really, really violent, a lot of bloody battles and that were very descriptive. And like I said, I kind of got lost in the details. But I did like the whole transport between different worlds, like the spiritual world with gods and stuff, and the human world through this wormhole. So that was pretty cool. And I like how the idea that you had this seen and unseen world that coexist with each other. Now you do have a found family trope. There's betrayal. I did find it was kind of a slow burn, which is interesting considering you had so much action with it. I just felt like the story just was taking a long time to get to the culmination. And I was just like, okay, let's get to it. The character is 17. So that might account for why at times I felt that there was some juvenileness going on. I almost felt like it was a YA just with a lot of bloodshed inside of it. Now you you do have a lot of biblical references in it there was a lot of prayers and actually let me read you this one thing so the one lady thinks that she's about to die and she goes remember me oh god when i've been erased from the earth remember me as powerless as i was remember that my greatest joy was fighting for you and when i'm gone remember that i loved you I just thought that that was absolutely beautiful. So there are some beautiful parts to this book that just really, you know, stood out for me. So I think that if you are looking for a religious fantasy and don't mind a bunch of bloodshed, I think this is really right up your alley because it takes so much from the Bible and puts it into here in a very unique fashion and definitely very imaginative for sure and let's see okay so the last prompt is Citie Partier which is basically read a middle grade novel <laughs> and that's what I did so this is called Eden's Everdark, which is such a beautiful cover, y'all. I tell you, I actually read this before I left for my trip. I just wanted to do any, everything in order. So Eden's Everdark is basically a middle grade fantasy novel about a girl who is grieving after the recent death of her mother. So she travels to some island, Safina Island in Georgia to visit her mother's people. And while she's there, she discovers this like sketchbook of her mother's with some magical place called Everdark and then she is transported to Everdark and is held captive by this evil witch who has this stolen magic and then along the way she finds out that she is not the only one that is trapped there and she helps to you know free people now I love loved in here how Eden was able to trace her ancestry all the way back to Africa as well as slavery in the United States and how her people having worked the land created this sort of magic connection with the land that allows them to cultivate it to their advantage but also it allows them to take pride in their lineage even through all of those dark times it was just very, very beautifully, beautifully explained. 
expressed from a nature standpoint. I thought that Eden was a very strong, strong and smart young lady and has an interest in her history, good and bad. I think that many young people can take a note out of her book for that. But the book was fun. It had a lot of relatable characters, especially from my childhood. And you had a lot of good old Southern drawls, which I can appreciate being a girl from Texas. So I really did enjoy this book. You know, it might make me want to pick up more middle grade. I did enjoy it. And like I said, that beautiful cover alone is just absolutely amazing. So, and let's see, that is, that is Journey-a-thon. I had a good time with it. So, you know what, Chatty? Good job putting it together. So, I'm going to get out of here. I think this vlog is probably the longest one I think I have ever, ever done. But well worth chronicling Bermuda. So, I hope that y'all have a great day and enjoying your summer because it's finally here. I need a cold drink. Bye, y'all.